Assalamu alaikum guys. I hope you're fine. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. I'm glad to see you guys uh, again in this other video and probably, not even probably, like when you guys will be viewing this video, uh, your din zone will have turned a year older because uh, tomorrow on 14th of November is when I started this YouTube channel. I started it with a friend of mine, Zaitun. Shout out to her. Thank you so much, Tony, for starting the journey with me. Thank you guys for uh, bringing the channel this far. When we started, we never thought we'd get to 450 plus subscribers. And Alhamdulillah, we are now over that and we are heading to 500 subscribers. So if you are watching this today, I'd like us to do this. Like, let's uh, try our best. Today being the anniversary of this channel, let's take it to 500 subscribers. Um, I really uh, request you guys to share this widely and encourage people to subscribe, to like. Remember, when you like a video, it tells the YouTube algorithm to recommend this video to other people because it is useful. So guys, do me a favor, help a sister, support a sister by liking this video, by commenting. Even if you will just drop an emoji or say something good or any kind of comment, like this video and remember to share it widely now yeah so happy anniversary to your deans on happy anniversary to you uh, viewers and thank you so much for supporting me to this far it has not been easy but alhamdulillah here we are and we are going to keep on moving yeah let's get to today's topic before we get to the next topic i want to share something with you about content creation now before i came here to shoot the video i tried different backgrounds different locations until i found this one to be uh, better in terms of the light there is another place where i can shoot the video in the evening but then in the evening we have uh, guests coming over here so it won't be uh, convenient for me to shoot at that time so I just had to choose this background so i want to tilt the camera a little bit show you the different locations that i had chosen this is part of showing you the struggle of a content creator stay tuned this is one of the location i had chosen but if you look at it because of the white curtain it's uh it it makes it it gives a lot of light to the wall because the wall is also light it is also white so it's reflecting a lot of light and also because there is a sink down here let me show you guys there is a sink down here so i cannot really stand properly so i will be limited i'll be so i'll be required to stand like this plus there's this there's so much light on this part that the background is not clear so i said no to this uh, background this background here too and it's the, the best background that i wanted but then the light is coming from outside and because of that i'm not you guys are not able to see me you can just see my mouth moving my white teeth but you can't really see me yeah so we said no to this one there's also this view here so right now i'm squatting because i don't want to stand up um yeah are you seeing the light uh behind me like there's a lot of light plus i didn't want to wear my my abaya so I didn't want to stand here or even sit because if I stand completely, you guys are going to see that I'm wearing a trouser and I'm not comfortable showing that. Yeah. So that's why we said no to this background. So yeah, guys, so far that is the background tour. So yeah, the black curtain plus the black wall, the, the white wall, much better than the other side. Though I really love graphics on the walls. Inshallah, you guys pray for me that I get money so that I can buy some of these things because I really love, uh, I, I, I don't like playing background. I love it when the background shows something. Plus, another dua I want you guys to pray for me is that you pray for me to get a good camera. Um, it could be an iPhone. <laughs> it could be just a good camera, you know, but just put that in your prayers because I'm not just aiming at producing a uh, uh, quality content but also i want the packaging to be good i want uh, you viewers to be satisfied by the packaging of the message that you get from this channel okay enough of that gossip let's get to the topic today i'm going to be standing yeah i'm sure most of us have experienced this type of fear where we find it so difficult to trust other people we have this anxiety in relying on other people because we are afraid of betrayal and uh, because of this, we are getting into relationships 
friendships without wanting to go too deep we stay at a surface level because we don't want to be vulnerable because most of the relationships we get into require us to go deep and trust in other people and we were not this way at first we were people who really believed in trust we were people who really believed in uh, good friendships good uh, relationships but then something happened that we did not expect from these people uh, from this person that had a place uh, in our hearts they betrayed us they put us down they did something detrimental to us to an extent that um, they destroyed our ability to trust again and that experience left a mark in our hearts and because of that we are now afraid of trusting again we we are unable even though we want to we we don't know what is going to come and because of that we choose not to trust we choose not to go into friendships we choose to to act uh, to act hard we choose to 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 act like we don't have emotions we choose to cover our hearts we choose to cover the real us because we don't want people to see our vulnerable side because we are afraid of experiencing the same thing that happened to us now today we are talking about the fear to trust again and uh, the scientific name for this is is pistanthrophobia. Yeah, you got it right. So we are going to look at what is uh pistanthrophobia. We are going to look at how does it feel? What causes uh, this uh, situation, this condition and how can we control it or how can we uh, bring our old selves back again? Okay, in the last scene, we talked about this transphobia or this fear to trust again. And we really talked about what it is and what it looks like. But now I want us to dive deep and look at it. Like, what are the real signs of this fear to trust? Maybe some of us just feel it, but it's not as deep as we are trying to, to label it, okay? Now I want us to use these signs and symptoms to gauge ourselves do we really have this fear to trust and let's get to the first symptom a person who has this fear to trust first of all they overestimate the worst case scenario in every incident okay uh, let's say somebody comes to you and they are so kind with you and they really have pure intentions with you but then you, you don't want to really engage with this person the person is trying to engage you but then you are thinking like Maybe this person really doesn't have pure intentions for me. They're just using me because they want to get something from me. Like a person who has uh, this uh, condition or, or this inability to trust again, they tend to have this deficiency of overestimating the worst case scenario in everything, in everything. And because of this, they block out the good people in their lives. Of course, not everyone has bad intentions uh, for us good people really exist but then because we are we are allowing these past experiences to determine every situation in our lives we end up blocking opportunities for us to grow we end up blocking opportunities for us to let people in people who are going to help us grow people who are going to see our vulnerability and choose to stay with us and choose to stay honest with us we tend to block all this and focus on the detrimental side and overestimate that everyone is just after something in this world. So that is one of the major symptoms of having a pistanthrophobia or the fear to trust. Another symptom is that uh, when somebody has this fear to trust, they tend to avoid going so deep into relationships. And I'm not just talking about sexual related relationships, I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about uh, work relationships. Like, this is a person who just does not want to engage so deeply with people because they don't want to let people so close so that people are able to, to know their inner details because they're afraid that if somebody knows the inner details, then they can use that against them. So the weapon they use to protect themselves is that they tend to avoid going into relationships or if they go into relationships, then they stay at a surface level. They don't allow themselves to feel. They block their emotions. They, they try to act hard even though they are one of the kindest person, you know. So this is the second symptom. A person with pistanthrophobia or the fear to trust, they have this uh, tendency of avoiding going into relationships or they might go into relationships but they want to stay at a surface level. They don't want to engage too much with other people.
Okay, another symptom of uh, a person with bistanthrophobia, and this is so normal. I have experienced it, and I have struggled to trust again. You know, so if you're if you're in this situation, or if you have been in this situation, there's no shame in it. Big things happen to us, and we were not expecting them to come because they came from people we were not expecting betrayal from. So if you are experiencing this, it's not even a shame. It's something that is super normal for every human being, and. It is not easy to go back again to the old you and trust again. So the third um, symptom of, of a person with bistranthrophobia is that this person tends to avoid deep conversations. Like, have you ever been asked by somebody, how are you? And then you're like, I'm fine. I'm fine. But deep down, you just want to pour it out that you're not okay. But then you feel like there's no safe space for you to do that. Maybe you have experienced this heartbreak or betrayal. And you really want someone to, to, to explain to, to hear you out, but then you don't, you don't want to let people know what you're experiencing because you think by letting people in, then you're going to make yourself vulnerable and somebody is going to see you maybe less strong. They are going to have this uh, bad image about you. So instead of sharing, you choose not to share anything and you doubt everyone you know sometimes it's 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 logical not to share everything but then there are people you can always share stuff with you know there are people you can confide in with not everyone is so bad as you think but then if you have this extreme fear to trust again you tend to block everyone out and avoid deep conversations like conversation about your emotional life conversations about your mental health conversations that are going to give a people deep information about you you tend to avoid such conversations the fourth symptom of uh, people with pisanthrophobia is that we tend to be withdrawn and by saying withdrawn here i mean that we tend to prefer loneliness we don't want to hang out with people because we could be in a group of people but we don't feel safe we don't feel that there are the love there the energy is real so because of all that thinking we prefer being on our own we prefer being withdrawn because we don't want to be with people because being with people means that we are going to share information about ourselves and because of that we prefer being alone so yeah those are some of the major symptoms of people who struggle to trust again. Now that we have seen the signs and symptoms of uh, pistanthrophobia, I'm sure we know where we are. And some of us, because we are talking of this topic, some of us have already been triggered and we feel this deep pain because we have been reminded of a betrayal that we experienced in the past. And because of this, we are even stimulated not to trust again because Maybe we didn't know that this fear existed in us, but now that we know it existed, we have started questioning everything, every relationship that we have, we just have a question mark about it. Does this person really love me? Does this person have deep, uh, good intentions with me? So I'm sorry about that, guys, but that is part of healing. That is part of the process, and that is part of noticing what we are about to get out of. So let's get to the causes of pistanthrophobia. So number one is past failed relationships. Most of us have been in relationships. And when I talk about relationships, it's a general thing. I'm not just talking about uh, sexual relationships. Okay, most of us have been in this type of relationships. And we, we, were, we were able to trust someone, you know? And this person we trusted ended up betraying us and because we were not expecting it to come from them, we felt disappointed. And because this was the only person we really trusted, maybe, we had a question mark about everyone else. And because of that, we ended up being uh, people who are so guarded, people who are so insecure, people who are just don't want to engage deeply with other people. So one of the causes uh, that could have brought us to this uh, inability to trust again is past failed relationships that left a deep mark inside of us to an extent that we are not able to trust again. Like that energy um, we had in the past of trusting and believing in people, trusting and believing in goodness went away. And we don't know where it went to, but 
we don't we don't trust people anymore and some of us might have this slogan that everyone is just bad in this world you know some of us might be in that extent in that stage but soon enough we are going to see the solution for this uh, kind of situation another cause could be um, just uh, mental illnesses like bipolar and some of these uh, mental illnesses they result to extreme fear extreme fear in trusting extreme fear in experiencing new things extreme fear to love again extreme fear to be loved because we just tend to overestimate you know uh, if somebody has this uh, condition called bipolar we know that it is a condition where we are oversensitive right we 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 are happy but we are not like okay we, we tend to be happy but then our happiness is also overestimated i'm sorry to use that word and even when we are sad our sadness uh, this is uh, a condition that allah has tested uh, us with so if we are sad our sadness is doubled you know and if we are happy our happiness is doubled so we are these hypersensitive people at at some point and because of this uh, this can uh, make us question our inability our ability to trust people because we have known that we are people who really trust people like if we trust a person we trust them to the core you know and if something suspicious comes out of it we tend to overestimate it to an extent that we just don't see the ability in us to, to trust again so another thing could be uh, because of a mental health illness called uh, bipolar okay another cause of uh, having this condition is that uh, it's just low self esteem just low self esteem whereby we feel less confident about ourselves and because of that we think that if people know know that about us then they are going to use that against us okay yeah and another reason for having this uh, inability to trust is even um bad uh, childhood upbringing okay maybe we were abandoned during our childhood and the people who we wanted love from and care from betrayed us and i'm really sorry if any of you experienced this but this could have uh, made our inner child so insecure and so guarded to an extent that this inner child inside us is afraid of letting people in because she thinks that if she ever lets people in then people are going to ruin her the same way they ruined her or him when she or he was a little girl so yeah those are some of the causes of pisanthropia the inability or the struggle to trust again okay now that we have gone all the way from knowing uh, about uh, pisanthropia and then we've come to knowing about the the symptoms we've gone to the causes now i want to look at the solution and uh the solution to this uh kind of condition could be triggering like it could trigger past traumatic experiences because it is uh this treatment of this kind of um this kind of condition requires us to go back to our past dig the reasons come up with the whys and come up with the solution at the end so I'm going to 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 share with you guys something that has helped me uh come out of it and I won't say that it is uh it is like something you can really get out of uh completely because it is something that I personally keep on working on because disappointments keep on coming and as human beings we 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 don't uh we are not uh I want to use the word waterproof but I think you guys understand by this term like we cannot block emotions okay even if we heal today tomorrow somebody is going to disappoint us so it might hurt us even if it's not the same way uh, it it hurt us before but then we get hurt still you know so it is something that we keep on working on until bismillah taala we hope that one day we are going to be these people who are just uh, raw they are vulnerable but at the same time uh, they they experienced these uh disappointments but they did not this they did not let these disappointments affect how they view their future and everyone in their lives so yeah let's come down to the treatment so there's something called cognitive behavioral therapy 
uh, I don't want to go deep into it, but I summarized it in a way that personally has worked for me. And this method that I'm going to share with, with you guys consists of three S. And I got this me this method from Jay Shetty's book, Think Like a Monk. I think it summarizes the cognitive behavioral therapy. The first S stands for spot. The second S stands for stop. The third S stands for swapping. So when we talk about spotting, we are spotting what is wrong, right? Like right now, you guys already know that whatever you feel is pistranthrophobia um, or is this inability, this phobia to trust people again, you know? Or you know already that this is not pistranthrophobia, this could be something else. So that is the first step. And congratulations, guys, for coming to the first step. You already know where you lie because we have already given the signs of pistranthrophobia. The second uh, thing after after sporting, after sporting what is wrong and giving it a label based on how we have this, how much uh, emotional uh, intelligence or how much emotional knowledge we have, we have already given a label to this condition that we have. So the second thing is to stop. And when we talk about stopping, stopping entails different steps too, you know. When we have, we have stopped and we already know that this is the condition we have, we start bringing questions. We start asking ourselves, why am I feeling this way? What happened to me? Who did this to me? We want to get answers of the thing that brought us to this condition. We have to get the whys, we have to ask ourselves the whens, we, have, we, ask, uh, we ask ourselves the what. When did this happen? What happened? Why did it happen? Like all these questions so that we can know where this condition originated from. At this point where we stop, it's actually a point where we reflect on uh, this condition. We go back to our past and as I've said before, this is going to be a triggering experience because we are going to be required to get answers. And if we are doing this on our own, sometimes it's going to be hard, but then we have to keep on going. We have to get that book or that notepad on our phone where we, we are free to give these answers to ourselves. When did this happen? Or what happened? Why am I feeling this way? Who did this to me? Like you have to recall all those experiences and give your, uh, yourself the honest answers. Because if we really want to heal, then we have to go raw. And the best way of retrieving these answers is by writing take a pen or take out your phone and start typing the answers to everything that you feel everything that you feel the why is the when the what everything that you feel now after stopping and reflecting on everything we want to come to the solution now now that we know this condition came about as a result of one two three how can we come out of it it's the second the third s comes swapping okay we'll realize that because of these experiences when anything comes i'll call it a trigger when anything comes that looks uh, looks like something that requires us to trust we become defensive okay and this is now where we need to swap things okay we need to realize when the trigger comes what trigger makes us uh, feel so defensive and feel withdrawn and this fear of us trusting against sabotages us. What kind of trigger makes us that way? And we'll realize that these triggers come as a result of negative thinking, okay? And this negative thinking is stimulated or was stimulated by our past traumatic experiences. So because of this, when something looks like kindness, it doesn't really it is not labeled as kindness by our thoughts, okay? Because of something that happened to us in the past. So, how are we going to swap these negative thoughts? We come up with uh, with affirmations. My affirmations might not uh, be, be so strong for you, okay? Or might not have the same impact as they had on me. But you have to come up with words that are going to help you swap the negative thoughts that you have with positive thoughts. Okay, and not just positive thoughts, but with realistic thoughts, because at the same point, at the same time, we know that there are people who don't have pure intentions for us. So one of the uh, affirmations that I used or I use until now, you keep telling yourself that the world is full of good people. 
okay and i am sorry i know what you experienced i know that that experience is what made you so defensive and i'm sorry that at that time i was not able to 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 protect you from all that harm but i want you to trust in me again i want you to know that i'm here that i'm going to protect you that there are good people outside here who want who want the best for you that not everyone in this world is bad okay talk to yourself talk to this inner child who was abandoned inside you until they feel relaxed until they are able to trust again and it's not going to be easy because it's not easy to convince a child to trust a person who just shouted uh, at them yesterday and they beat them up okay so it's, it's going to be the same thing to you so you have to take yourself slowly you have to make sure that you know how to talk to yourself you know how to calm yourself down that's why i'm saying that you need to come up with affirmations that work for you and you need to come up with realistic affirmations don't lie to yourself don't tell yourself everyone is uh okay i know you have to tell yourself something like i know not everyone is good uh in this world or things like uh good people exist okay you need to stop lying to yourself by saying that everyone is good in this world because it's not true and your soul is not going to accept this because of the past experience that they had so you need to go around with yourself come up with affirmations google look for affirmations that are going to help you trust again that are going to help you be this uh, person who welcomes people in who invites good people in because if you keep on being withdrawn chances are you're blocking good people out of your life and this is not good for you the last thing you'll end up having is depression and if you don't cure it too you might end up committing things like suicide when the help be may Allah protect us from that but then a lot of work needs to be done okay another thing after creating all that uh thinking uh, pattern or after renovating your thinking pattern you need to start standing up for your emotions okay if somebody says something wrong to you you need to stand up for yourself stand up in in a better way okay i'm not saying that you should start insulting people but you need to know how to stand up for yourself if you don't feel respected somewhere if you're not welcome genuinely know how to take yourself out of such places if you are not uh if you are around toxic people who keep giving you bad vibes know how to avoid such places let your inner child trust you again okay let your inner child learn to trust because of what you do right now because of how you stand for your emotional self you know if your inner child knows that you stand up for your emotional self trust me all this drama of not trusting in other people is going to fade away but then you have to do the work of making your inner child trust in you because you are able to start for your emotional self if you're not welcomed in a table don't put yourself there and know the people who really got you and those people who are just trying to look like they got you but in real sense they don't really value you, okay stand for your emotional self that is how you're going to get the ability from the inner child in you to trust again so guys uh the other solution to this the third solution is if symptoms persist even after you doing all this okay I, i know it's going to take time okay but if you feel like you really need uh, uh help there are professionals who can help you again and don't stigmatize yourself and think that if you go see a counselor or a psychiatrist then it means that i don't know you have this you have that no these are things that deserve treatment they deserve attention just like any other illnesses so i tried reaching out to different people some replied some didn't one of the uh, psychiatrists or counselors that replied is saida buhaiti she's based in mombasa um uh, along digo road there is a uh, behind mskit konzi i i'll give you guys the details okay i'm not so good at cramming i have the details but they are not yet in my mind but i'm going to leave the contact here i'm going to leave the details here and i was also told that she charges 1000 per session but there are also there is also free counseling in public hospitals especially potries and uh, it could range from 200 to 500 shillings in a session that is in public hospitals so guys 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 if you really need uh, help from a specialist this is high time you invest in your mental health so that you can gain that trust uh, that ability to trust again thank you so much for watching um this has been a very eye opening session for me 
I hope you guys benefited from this and support a sister, like the video, comment, share, and bring in more subscribers. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much and happy anniversary to you and to your Dinzon channel and Maasalam.